You throw over $1,000 a month into local wishing wells. Of course, you idiot, because I'm wishing for more money. This is the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steindler. All right, welcome back to Keeping Your Money Show. Jamie Westenberger joined, as always, by Bart Steinler. You know, if you listen every weekend or maybe you're just catching us for the first time as we've expanded ourselves onto a number of stations across West Michigan, this is the Keeping Your Money Show. We're the longest running locally produced financial program uh, here in town, actually in the whole state. And on top of that, we want to a merit award from the Michigan Broadcasters Association last year. So we must be doing something right. Um, but yeah, stay, stay tuned. We, uh, we try to provide good information, help you cut through all the, the, the sales pitches and junk out there to actually get good info, uh, on retirement and planning for retirement. If you miss any part of the show, you can always find it on our website. Just go to keepingyourmoney.com or you can find it at any of our podcast partners, iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, or Stitcher. Just search for the Keeping Your Money show. Toll free, our number is 888-98-MONEY. That's 888-986-6639. Uh, we don't take calls on the air, but someone does answer the phone 24 hours a day because uh, I did flip the switch this week. So, um, <laughs> you know, how many times, Bart, do we talk to somebody and they say, you know, I'm just going to probably work till 70. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to probably work till 70. My job's not hard. I'm well respected there. I make good money. You know, I like what I do. You know, uh, a lot of these are sometimes, I don't want to say excuses like it's a bad thing, but they're reasons for maybe not planning as heavily as maybe you should because you think, well, if I make it to 75 at a job, what's that, 15 more years of life and between my 401k and social security, I'm good. You know, yeah. well, I mean, I know a handful of people that, you know, they, they would have liked to retire at 65. But they didn't do the planning or the savings that was necessary. Or maybe they had some setbacks that they didn't count on. Um, But more likely, it's that they didn't do the savings or the planning that was necessary when they were 35 or 40. And now, you know, they pretty much need to work Mm -hmm. until they're 70. Well, and it's interesting. Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies did a survey. And they found of retirees that they survey, half of them, half of them ended up retiring sooner than they had anticipated, most often because of losing a job, organizational change at their employer, or 47% of them were required to retire because of health issues. So even though the average age someone may say they want to retire is 66 or 67 or 70, Mm -hmm. uh, or that they think they'll retire, I said, I mean, most people want to retire like 50, but maybe they think they'll retire. The actual survey's median retirement age was 63, and nationally, the average age of retirement is 62. Yep. Um, and so even though you may think you're going to work longer, um, a lot of times it's out of your control. You don't have a choice in the matter. But, you know, the medical one is is pretty easy to understand. You know, the older you get, the more likely that there's going to be some medical issues that pop up and that those are going to affect your um, ability to continue to work. Okay. I know my dad had to retire at age 62 for medical reasons. So, you know, it's very real. And I don't think he would have retired at 62 if that had not been the case. It may have been 60 even, actually, when I mm-hmm. think about it. But anyway, um, the other thing that goes on is cultures change a lot. Technology changes a lot. And it's a little bit harder to keep up with it when you're in your 60s than it is when when you're in your 30s and you maybe grew up with a rapidly changing technology. So your job may, the way that your job is actually done may change to such a large degree that you're not going to be wanted there anymore and they're going to find a way of easing you out. Organizational changes happen. Companies that are extremely profitable run into some hard times and become less profitable. And they offer buyout packages. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't offer buyout packages and you just are let go. There's all sorts of things that happen that are not in your control. So when you're looking at this from a planning prospect, which is what we do, you almost have to plan to be financially and mentally ready to retire at 62 or 65. And then if you want to keep working, it's just a little extra gravy on the 
mashed potatoes, as they say. Well, and what's interesting too is it, it's it, it could even be a disconnect between employee and employer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they talk about a survey uh, that was done by Willis Watson. <laughs> I think it's Willis Towers Watson. They have it as Willis Watson Towers, but I'm pretty sure it's Willis Towers Watson. Um, but um, it, just in discussing how employers feel about their aging workforce, and they found that only 9% of employers that they had uh, talked to offered a formal path of phasing into retirement. So many times we hear in national publications Maybe you'll phase into retirement. You'll you'll lessen your hours. You'll go to less days. You'll take on less responsibility. Yet here's a national survey of 143 large U.S. employers that say, eh, we don't have that option. So, you know, make sure what you're actually planning to do is feasible for the company you work with, too. You know, you go yeah. in one day and say, listen, guys, I've been here 35 years I'd like to wind down to 30 hours a week for the next two years, 20 for a year after that, and then I'm done. And they might say, eh, if you're going to do that, maybe you should just be done. <laughs> you right, know, right. I mean, you, you got to know the environment uh, that that you're uh, that you're that you're working in, too, and that the the ideas you have about what your retirement looks like are actually feasible. And and I would even say in regards to that too, pay attention to the older workers that currently work where you work now. Right. How are they treated by management? How are they treated by the company? Is the 60-year-old you work with every day generally considered as valuable of an employee as you are? Or, you know, have there start to been some grumblings about, you know, I think he takes a little more time off than he used to. It gives you at least a little bit of an idea of the culture of what things will be like maybe when you get a little bit older and face the same situations as that person is facing. Yeah, actually working with a couple people right now that are in that kind of situation and something that kind of ties in and it was in this article somewhere where it said that the fact that if you can work an extra year or two years, it actually... One year. One year better, three and a half times more financially beneficial than if you contributed 1% of your wages over 30 year period of time. Yeah. So I mean, that's huge. That's huge. And and a lot of people I talk to are contemplating leaving the workforce. I, I hear this over and over again because they don't like their job. You know, maybe they have a boss now that they don't enjoy working with or, you know, the job has changed or the company has been bought out and you're reporting to somebody else or any number of things, but they just don't like work anymore. Mm-hmm. And so they look at it as a, as a, it's either work or retire. Right. Um, It could be go find another job. Sure. It could be go find some other work to do. Could be contract work. Could be contract work. Could be working as a consultant, although that's a lot of times harder to do than in reality. Yeah, but I mean, depending on what you do, you may find, especially, you know, and you were talking about technology. There's a perfect example of making sure your technology skills are up to, Mm -hmm. to date. You know, if you work in HR, there may be an opportunity through you know, interconnecting with, with, you know, online and things like that, you could offer HR services to companies on a contractual basis and potentially do as well as you're doing right now without all of the strings that you have tied into with your employer. Um, You know, if you're doing uh, a number of different things, sometimes those, those options are available. Um, But it's important to kind of explore all of that, realizing you may be retiring earlier than you want to, this was really interesting statistic. If you retire at 66 instead of retire at 62, your living standards in retirement will be increased by a third. A third. That's a huge difference for a four-year period of time. And I think that's a perfect example of just like we talked in the last segment where a financial advisor isn't just someone who uh, asset allocates your portfolio. This is the kind of stuff that a good independent financial advisor can help you with to figure out what your best case scenario is for you. Jamie, I think you just talked me into sticking around for another four years. Did you? Yeah. (laughs) It's a third. It's a third, Bart. It's a third. All right. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about those things called annuities. Uh, We hear about them all the time. One guy says never. One guy says always. Uh, What's the real story right here on the Keep Your Money Show?
It's never too late to plan for your future, and the Keeping Your Money Show can help. Our team of advisors can answer questions you may have about investing your money. Through Securities America, Inc., our advisors offer a diversified and comprehensive list of quality products and services. Call the Keeping Your Money Show at 1-888-98-MONEY or visit KeepingYourMoney.com to schedule your free consultation. You are a waste, a loser. Everyone hates you. Why don't you just stay in your car and keep driving? I'm serious. Drive until you run out of gas, then get out of your car and walk until you find someone who doesn't think you're dumber than bricks. Could take a while, but at least all that walking might burn a couple of calories. You may not witness bullying like this every day. Your kids do. They want to help, but they don't know how. Visit StopBullying.gov to learn safe, simple ways your child can help stop bullying. Be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Music is a bridge between the material and the spiritual. My name is Harvey Lauer, and I'm 82. As a blind person, you have to be aware that nobody can tell you what you can or can't do. You really have to try things. My folks got me a little radio in 1940, and that was the best Christmas present I ever got. When I was 11 years old is when I started to uh, play music, play the piano, and then the accordion, and then the cello. My wife, who was also blind, was a good cook. When she died, that's when I started Meals on Wheels. America, let's do lunch. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. This message brought to you by Meals on Wheels America and the Ad Council. Uncle Dan? Mom? Dad? If you store your guns properly, so not just anyone can get to them. I'll feel safer when I'm playing outside. Safer when walking home. Safer when my friends come over. As your neighbor, I'll feel safer. As a school teacher, I'll feel safer. We'll all feel safer. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Remember... Always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council.